Of all the seasons, Rosemary Brown loved them the most. Usually, it's unsaid for most people carries a feeling of sadness caused by thoughts about the coming winter. Until a certain time, the yellow foliage from the trees and a drizzling rain did not cause Mrs. Brown melancholy or depression. The old lady liked to warm her feet by the fireplace, and from time to time watch how strong gusts of wind outside drive the leaves through the autumn streets of the city. But for some time now, the arrival of autumn was associating with a morning date in her personal life calendar. Exactly three years ago, her only son Frank died. Since childhood, the guy dreamed of becoming a military man, and therefore, upon reaching adulthood, he put his plan into practice and enlisted in the ranks of the Marine Corps. Rosemary Brown raised her son alone, without anyone's support or help. She herself grew up in an orphanage, and from an early age was deprived of parental warmth and affection. Rosemary always liked being around children, and therefore, when choosing a future profession, she took this factor into account. After graduating from university and becoming an educator, Rosemary Brown moved to the small town in northern Maine. While teaching history at a local school, she told children about outstanding historical figures and events that changed the whole world, and everything would be fine. But only Rosemary Brown's family life did not go well from the very beginning. Her husband Larry turned out to be a dishonest man and a bad husband, Drinking alcoholic beverages every day, he was a regular at all drinking establishments in the area. Of course, Rosemary tried to fix her husband, but it was almost impossible to correct the inveterate alcoholic. Partly, the addiction of alcohol was explained by problems at work, and partly by the absence of children. Deep down, Larry dreamed of an heir, with whom he could go fishing or hunting on weekends. Unfortunately, one desire in this case was not enough. Therefore, no matter how much Rosemary tried, she couldn't get pregnant. Endless trips to the doctors and medical examinations did not bring any results, which turned the girl's life into hell. Time passed, and Rosemary and Larry still have no children in their family. But then, the situation changed dramatically. And it all started with the fact that shortly before his 45th birthday, Larry stopped drinking at all. The man found a normal job and for the first time in his life, felt the benefits of sobriety. Unable to conceive the child, the couple decided to take the boy from an orphanage. But when some of the documents necessary for adoption were already collected, Rosemary suddenly found out that she was pregnant. Of course, for a 45-year-old woman, it was a real miracle. Despite the fact that the whole period of Rosemary's pregnancy was haunted by terrible toxicosis and dizziness, the birth itself was surprisingly easy and painless. Little Frankie, from the first days of his life, pleased his parents with his calmness and intelligence. The boy did not wake them up at night, and if he cried, it was very rarely, and only for a reason. Unfortunately, Rosemary Brown's family idol was short-lived. Six months after the birth of her son, her husband Larry died in an accident while transporting timber. Left alone, Rosemary did not give up, and directed all her energy to raising her son. Frank grew up a smart and obedient boy. He had good grades at school, and the teachers predicted a good future for him. But to the surprise of many, Frank chose a dangerous military profession, risking himself daily to save human lives in many parts of the world. Three years ago, during a complex operation in one of the countries of the Middle East, Frank's unit was ambushed. Frank was a good commander. In any circumstances, he tried not to expose the soldiers to unnecessary risk, but he could not save himself in a distant country. Saving a large family, he was mortally wounded and died in a hospital without regaining consciousness. My beloved son, you always dreamed of being a hero. Your dream has come true. Rest in peace, only a week to your 30th anniversary. You didn't even have time to start a family. The old woman whispered, clutching the purple heart order given to her son posthumously to her chest. The woman visited the cemetery several times a week. Visiting her son's grave, she shared with him the most intimate secrets, sincerely believing that there is still an invisible connection between them. So, it turned out this time, when she came to the cemetery, she began to tell Frank about her lonely and joyless life. The neighbors are hurting me again, son. They moved to us from a neighboring state, but they behave as if they're the masters of life. 
I, of course, tried to calm them down, but to no avail. They wouldn't even listen to me. I tried to call the police, but no one would listen to me. They think I have dementia. They think I'm a half-witted liar and a grumpy old woman. But it is a lie. These new neighbors are devils in a human form. If you were here now, you would certainly stand up for me. Mrs. Brown complained to the tombstone on the grave of her son. With tears in her eyes, she talked about what was painful and what she could not tell an outsider, and there was no one to talk about. Well, that's it, son. I'll go, or else I'll be late for the bus. The old woman sat touching the concrete steel and stalled at the expense of her son's colleagues. Barely holding back tears, the old woman wandered home, wrapped in a shabby coat and a piercing autumn wind. Mrs. Brown did not want to go home, because there she was again waiting for the obnoxious antics of the neighbors, who recently seemed to have broken loose. At some point, Rosemary began to think about selling the house and moving to another neighborhood. The old lady was walking along the sidewalk, lost in sad thoughts. Suddenly, not a hundred yards from the bus stop, she saw a girl sitting on the bench. The stranger was hugging a little boy to her and looked around in fright. The girl was dressed very poorly and looked like a beggar or a tramp. Rosemary Brown's heart trembled, and she could not pass by. Autumn and Maine was always cool, and therefore the unfortunate girl had to shield the baby with her body in order to protect him from the cold wind. Mrs. Brown came closer and offered to help. The stranger looked up to the elderly woman with eyes full of tears and said in a low voice, My stepfather kicked me out of the house. As soon as he found that I got pregnant, he became completely different. He shouted and threatened that he would not let me and a child in the house. But after giving birth, he still allowed me to live. But it was not life, but a living hell. And now he's completely kicked me out of the house. There is no one to go to. There is not a cent of money. And where is your husband? Well, or boyfriend, at least. Rosemary Brown asked, embarrassed by her own words. We broke up with him. Even before the birth of our son, I was stupid, and now it's too late to fix mistakes. The girl replied with a sob. It's okay, don't cry, honey. Tears won't help you. Come to my place. The bus should arrive any minute, and it will immediately hit the road. What's your name? The old lady asked, casting an inquisitive glance at a stranger. Evelyn. Evelyn Rogers, ma'am. And this is Bobby, my son. He's four years old, the girl said quietly, hugging her son to her chest. Rosemary Brown was ready to share a shelter with the young mother and her child. She was desperately sorry for this girl and her son, a cute baby, very tiny. At this time, the bus just came up and passengers began to enter the salon. Mrs. Brown took Evelyn's hand and firmly led her along. In conversations about life and vicissitudes of fate, the road flew by unnoticed for the old lady and her new friend. Evelyn said that her mother died a long time ago, and living with her stepfather was simply unbearable. Upon arrival in the city, Mrs. Brown immediately went to the store, where she bought everything necessary for the guest and her little son. Well, this is how I live. The house is old, but quite cozy. On cold days, it's always warm, Mrs. Brown said modestly, showing Evelyn her home. I'll make a bed for Bobby and you in my son's room. There's a big bed there, and it will be comfortable to sleep, the old woman said with warmth in her voice. The first night passed surprisingly calmly. Little Bobby really liked this new place and looked with interest at the collection of baseball cards that Mrs. Brown's son collected as a child. They used to be Frank's passion. Evelyn lived in the old lady's house for three days. During all this time, she only volunteered to help Mrs. Brown in the kitchen once. The fact that the girl absolutely did not know how to cook and did not know how to handle certain kitchen utensils surprised Rosemary Brown very much. Honey! Why do you feel so uncomfortable in the kitchen? The old lady noticed. Evelyn was confused for a moment, and then said that there was simply no one to teach her. It's okay, there will be time, I'll teach you everything. My signature dish is apple pie with cherry jam. My son was crazy about it. Said Miss Brown, 
and gently stroked the poor thing on the head. Why don't you have any photos of him in the house? What happened to him? Evelyn asked. Mrs. Brown sighed sadly and answered in a trembling voice. My friend had died. I deliberately removed the photos in order not to get upset. When they were hanging on the wall, I could not pass by so as not to stop and cry. If you want, you can take a look at these photos there, in the desk drawer, right next to your bed. Speaking of this, Rosemary Brown did not even realize that in the very near future, her life would change dramatically. And it all started with the fact that the very next morning, when Mrs. Brown entered Evelyn's room, she found her bed empty. Only little Bobby was lying on the blanket, playing with toys and smiling affably at the old lady. What is this? Where is your mom, baby? Rosemary Brown whispered puzzled. And then she saw an album with photos of her late son lying on the floor. Most likely Evelyn was looking through it. Suddenly, Mrs. Brown's head was pierced by an unpleasant thought. Did Evelyn leave me her baby for good? Praying the God for this to turn out to be wrong, the woman went out into the corridor and saw that the girl's clothes had also disappeared from the hangar. Deep down, Mrs. Brown knew that Evelyn would never come back. Most likely, the girl will try to leave as far away as possible and possibly even leave the state. Most of all, Mrs. Brown was outraged by the fact that Evelyn had no qualms about leaving her son with a complete stranger to her. Several hours had passed and Evelyn was still missing. How is it possible? What a nightmare to leave her own child to the mercy of fate, the old woman thought, wiping away a tear. Realizing that it was necessary to act immediately, Mrs. Brown took Bobby with her and went to the nearest police station. The duty officer, looking at surprise at the old woman and the little boy, sent a strange couple for the department for the search of missing people. The policeman immediately recognized the old woman by her voice. After all, she called the police several times to complain about bad neighbors. Work is in a full swing in the office, and they were not happy to see Rosemary Brown, frankly speaking. I don't understand the purpose of your visit, ma'am. Do you think I have nothing else to do except listening to your tales about the abandoned boy and his runaway mother? You brought strangers into your house yourself, and then you wonder why they left the child for you. No, I will not accept the statement about missing mother of the baby. The policeman replied after listening to Mrs. Brown's story. After his words, the whole department burst into a chorus of laughter. But I didn't know Evelyn would do that. She looks like such a nice girl, the elderly woman stammered. She felt very ashamed that everyone thought she was a crazy liar. Already at the door, she ran into the head of the department, who looked about 35 years old. When he saw the statement to the woman's hands, he ran his eyes over it. As the policeman delved into the essence of what was written, the wrinkles on the man's forehead smoothed out, making him even more attractive. Mrs. Brown, was your son's name Frank by any chance? Looking up from reading, the policeman asked. Yes, you're right, sir. Frank Brown... And what does this have to do with the case? The old lady asked in surprise. The policeman's face changed instantly, and then he took Mrs. Brown and little Bobby into the waiting room. Wait for me here, ma'am. I'll figure it out in the meantime, said the policeman, and at the same moment disappeared into the office. What are you doing here? Who do you think you are? Why are you making fun of a poor woman? Is it funny to you? It's not funny to me at all. Do you even know who Frank Brown is? He's a real hero, you know? He personally took me out from under fire during a combat operation. I was still at the Marines at the time, and I know what I'm talking about. If you don't want any problems, quickly find me the mother of this boy. I'll talk with Mrs. Brown's neighbors personally. The head of the department said in a tone that broke no objections and slammed the door. Then John White approached Mrs. Brown and apologized on behalf of all employees. The head of the department promised to take control of the case and certainly find Bobby's runaway mother. Boy can stay with you for now. Or I can take him to an orphanage. You are an elderly woman. It won't be easy with a child. But Rosemary shook her head. No, it's out of the question. Bobby will stay with me. Good. Then I'll keep you informed. So wait for the call. I promise to do my best. I served in the same unit as your son, ma'am. 
He saved my life. After being wounded, the road to the Marines was closed for me, so I joined the police. Calm down and don't be afraid of anything, ma'am. From now on, your neighbors will behave like quiet mice, the policeman said. Then, shaking the old lady's hand in gratitude, he escorted her and the boy to the exit. Rosemary Brown was still in mixed emotions from meeting with the police officers. The woman did not want the boy to be taken away, because he was as good and calm as her Frank as a child. Three days have passed. All this time, Mrs. Brown kept her eyes on the phone, afraid of missing an important call. They probably won't find anyone, the woman thought sadly. At that very moment, a patrol car with flashing lights slowed down at her house. Going outside, the woman was stunned. John White and Evelyn Rogers got out of the car. At the sight of the old woman, the girl lowered her eyes in embarrassment. Well, Mrs. Brown, I hasten to please you. The boy's mother was found, although she's not really his mother, but... Let me not brush things and tell you about everything in order. Can we go into the house? The policeman asked. Yes, of course. I'll put the kettle on. Opening the door, the old lady bustled. As it turned out a little later, John White was rightfully considered one of the best employees in the precinct. As a result of the investigation, he not only found Evelyn, but also found out the secret of her disappearance along the way. As it turned out, she was not little Bobby's mother at all, but his aunt. The baby's real mother, Linda Rogers, died in childbirth. The news of this shocked Mrs. Brown to the core. After losing her older sister, Evelyn became Bobby's foster mother. In fact, yesterday's cool girl took on all the burdens associated with motherhood. But the most surprising thing was that the boy's father was no other than Frank Brown. Shortly before his death, the man was in a relationship with Linda Rogers, but then there was a disagreement between them. After breaking up with Frank, Linda found out too late that she was pregnant. By this time, they were no longer communicating. The girl didn't even know where he was, so the guy didn't know anything about pregnancy. Evelyn has only seen her sister's boyfriend a couple of times. But it was enough for her to immediately recognize him in the photos. After seeing a photo of Frank at Mrs. Brown's house, Evelyn couldn't control her own emotions. The girl associated all the troubles and misfortune that had befallen her lately with the name of Frank. This is the death of her sister, and the humiliation of her stepfather, and the problems with raising little Bobby. Therefore, in a fit of anger, Evelyn left her adopted son unsuspecting Rosemary Brown. Now, looking into the old woman's eyes, Evelyn was ready to beg her forgiveness on her knees. Deep down, the girl repented of what she had done, and at the time of her discovery, she was already heading to the Mrs. Brown's house. Coming down, Evelyn said that Frank and her sister Linda met quite by chance during dinner at the cafe. Young people immediately liked each other and began dating. Their timid and tender relationship imperceptibly developed in the stormy romance. Most likely their relationship would have ended with a wedding, if not for the stupid quarrel. Linda was completely unreasonably jealous on Frank and made an ugly scene. They had a strong quarrel. After listening to Evelyn's confused story, Mrs. Brown hugged her. Dear Evelyn, you've had so much trouble and grief. Don't hold grudge against my son. Stay in my house. You're not a stranger to me. I will thank the Lord every day that you met me on my way. Otherwise, I would never have known that I have my own grandson. With tears in her eyes, the old woman said. Evelyn looked at John White sitting across from her and smiled. Having agreed to Mrs. Brown's proposal, the young mother decided to start a new life in which there would be no insults and misunderstandings. Rosemary Brown, who thought her life was over, was able to feel happy. Baby Bobby is becoming more and more like Frank every day. She dotes on her grandson, who responds in kind. In the long evenings, Rosemary and Evelyn review photos from the family photo album, from the pages of which a smiling Frank looks at them. His portrait is now hanging on a wall in the living room again. Little Bobby knows it's his dad. John White talked to the neighbors. Mrs. Brown didn't know what he told him. But the result was instant. Now they greeted each other respectfully when they met. And then, they left somewhere altogether. John became a frequent guest at Rosemary's house. Looking at John and Devlin with a smile, the old lady knows that this is not for nothing. 
Even more, Mrs. Brown is sure that the spark has already passed between the young people, from which the flame of mutual sympathy turns into a huge bonfire of love and passion.